welcome back, and thank you for joining us for another QuakeCon at Home segment. I am Joshua Boyle, Senior Community Manager on Doom Eternal, and I am joined here in my fabulous living room, as you can see, by none other than two legends from id Software. On the left of your screen, we've got Marty Stratton, Executive Producer id. How's it going, Marty? Hey, how are you doing? Good to be here, thanks. Pretty good, feels like I just saw you, but you switched locations and now you're in the theater, so the world is your oyster. Looks like you're just- I know, I've taken Kevin's seat in the theater. <laughs> Look, it's like Cinemark id. I like that. That's that's a trademark that we're going to work on. Uh, and and <laughs> again, we are joined by uh, somebody you might see me with uh, pretty often on the weeklies. What's going on? This is none other than Hugo Martin, game director of Doom Eternal. How's it going, bro? Good, good. I'm uh, I'm doing good. I'm glad to be here. Uh, broadcasting all the way from Long Island, New York. What? <laughs> Wait, is this is this your childhood home that you're in right now? Because we need to dig into this for a second. Is that where you are? I, I am at my parents' house. This is not where I grew up, but this is we, we are at grandma's. This is awesome. I feel like at some point later in the stream, this is not going to happen, but we could just go into a full tour of the grandma's house with a camera. Just Hugo <laughs> Gonzo filmmaking. That was right. amazing. Well, and we've prepared a slideshow of Hugo <laughs> growing up. I want to see it. We're going to roll at the end of okay. it. Okay. All right. We'll do a segment where she makes empanadas. We all learn how to make empanadas. That's good, that's good. <laughs> well, we've got a lot of to work with here, obviously, but we are here to celebrate not only 25 years of QuakeCon, which is insane when you think about it, but also with Doom Eternal, just, just recently we had a pretty big update. That was update six. Marty, if you wanna just talk us through a quick couple of points of all the amazing work everyone at IT has been so busy at work on. We'll get to future stuff in a minute, but first let's take kind of that lap to say that where the game is at right now with update six. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's already been a, a busy year. It's crazy how fast things have been going, but uh, really fantastic stuff by the team at id. You know, we, we basically hit uh, DLC two, um, uh, the Ancient Gods uh, part two uh, came out in March and then we, we rolled straight into our next gen update, which is what uh, the update you're, you're talking about, update six. Um, added a, a ton of great video options, added ray tracing on Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5, and obviously uh, compatible PC hardware. Um, tons, of, tons of just general updates to the game. Uh, added the Terrace Navad Master Level, um, made a bunch of updates to Battle Mode to take care of uh, some, some uh, latency that people felt and, and some server hitching that, that we feel like we have a, have a good fix in for, for at this point. Um, and, uh, and just re really an overall big update for the team. Um, I think big update for players. It seems like uh, everybody has responded well. You know, we're still, we're still working on a few things. We, we had a, uh, a quick update um, come out shortly after, and then uh, we're gonna do a few more, um, a few more small fixes uh, in an upcoming update. But, uh, but overall, just really, really proud of, of the team. You know, I've talked a lot about, uh, you know, the fact that it's been, it's been really different for us to work from home for the last 18 months. We, we launched Doom literally as we were going home uh, due to the pandemic. Um, and just the, the team has just rallied uh, time and time again to keep the game um, updated, uh, add new content, and, uh, and just couldn't be prouder of everyone it did. Yeah, well said. I mean, it's been incredible how much work everyone has been doing from home, not in the studio, where all of that creative energy feeds off of each other so naturally. But Hugo, uh, we're gonna show on the screen in a second here. We're gonna to have to visualize. Starting right now, all the way up until, I believe it's September 2nd, we've got this QuakeCon 2021 Slayer Skin Player Badge and Icon as a thank you to fans. So walk us through how these things get made because I feel like the cosmetics in this game have been so completely insane. So like, what's the process like of, of making those? Uh, yeah, like hot dog man. I mean, the, <laughs> so who knew that our concept team were also, you know, comedians right. is, is really what it comes down to. Like, it, it's funny, I've, I've run into some of the old id guys uh, around Dallas and, and uh, Adrian Carmack, I think I ran into, and he said that, uh, you know, they in the beginning, they all just wanted to make each other laugh. That was like a big driving point behind a lot of the stuff they did with the original Doom. <laughs> and and it, that's a, a through line that still exists to this day. You know, like we we uh, we want to do it cool and we want to do it badass, but like there's also kind of a tongue in cheek quality to everything that we do. And so the skins have definitely, you know, uh, given the, the team a chance to, to, to flex their muscles when it comes to that stuff. Some of them are really badass as we know, and we love the super badass skins. Uh, the ones that are, you know, more serious and like the Slayer stuff. 
And then there's some like the hot dog mancubus, which are just really meant to um, put a smile on everybody's faces, <laughs> uh, which they do. It, it kind of like, there's just a jam session that goes on with the team. And there's like a, <clears throat> you know, loose categories for things. And we're, there's such a rich history with the brand that we're able to do some nostalgia stuff, do, you know, Doom 64 guy, these different things mm -hmm. that we're able to do. And then, and then there's always just like the funny category stuff. And uh, it's kind of like a, a little a little American Idol contest. We just sort of pick, <laughs> s see which sketches are the most promising, or the or the coolest, or the most ridiculous, and they go into uh, production. I think the art station dump that we've seen from the yeah. character modeling team recently really shows you off that like we take these hilarious drawings, but we we execute them on the highest level um, with the character team and the prop team, the art team. It's it's really amazing stuff. So. And then the, the icons, a bit everything. Like the, the I mean, the the UI team gets involved, and Dave Dave Rose and his crew knock out some killer stuff. So head on over to Slayers Club and and look out on the on the different social uh, outlets to see what we have coming next. We still got a little more coming, a few, a few more really cool ones on the way that I think people will really love. But speaking of new content, you know, we've had so much amazing community support of people you know, popping off with all the different crazy things we've done in-game as far as cosmetics and everything else we're talking about, but also with master levels. And at this point now, Hugo, in the streams that we've done, the weekly ones, we've already revealed both of the master levels and what they are. But let's get into that a little bit deeper and start talking about what's on the horizon next, which is the next big update, update 6.66. Yeah, up next is, let me get this right. You got this. It's World Spear. That's what yeah, it is. Yeah, that's the one. And, okay. and, uh, and Mars, Mars Core. Mars and then Core, after yep. that, are we allowed to say, Marty, are we allowed to say, is that what Josh, you're asking me? No. Am I allowed to say it the next <laughs> one? I don't even think we could. No. <laughs> um, let's just stay with, let's stay with update 6.6. I'm 6. always ready 6. to 6. announce something. He's like, and I'll give you this, and I'll sell you a little bit of that, and we'll do this. No, let's just stay with update 6.66, which is the next big kind of like major push for Eternal. Yeah, we got, we've got, uh, obviously from the Master Levels perspective, we got World Spear and, uh, and Mars Core, mm -hmm. as, as Hugo said, you know, a, a DLC map, which, uh, you know, which I think is, is really awesome. Give, give players something even, uh, you know, something even newer who, who have been playing Master Levels. They'll have, have a, a, a new take on things with, um, with that map. And the Mars Core is just such an amazing map. Uh, you know, one of, the, one of the highlights of Doom Eternal. I think uh, you know bringing a master level to that, and of course, you know just like with Terrace and Abad, uh, these master levels will have all of the modes associated with them: um, the classic mode, uh, extra life mode, you know, ultra nightmare difficulty uh, to, so, so to really to really challenge those top players. But you know, if you haven't played extra life mode or you haven't played classic mode, um, and, and of course, all of the master levels are playable on all the difficulties, right. so you don't have to you know. You have to you have to be experienced with the game, but uh, but I really do encourage players to get, to get in there and play those master levels because they're they're just such great content, mm -hmm. really really fun, um, great great way to engage. I talked about it a little bit in the uh, in the Slayers Club post that uh, that we put up a, a few weeks ago. Um, of course, we've we've kind of pivoted a little bit uh, our development effort uh, around the game towards a, uh, uh, a horde mode that we're really excited about. Uh, I, th I think Hugo can, can talk a little bit about uh, our, our direction there, yeah. but um, really just, again, another fun way for players to engage um, just exactly how they want to with the game. Um, our combat loops are, are just so much fun um, that, uh, that I think it's really a good opportunity um, and, and I think the way the way horde mode's going to play out is people are really going to have a have a lot of fun with it. And then we've got a, um, a, a kind of an update to battle mode um, that adds a competitive, uh, really a competitive flair to it. Um, same thing. I think I think it it's, it steers into exactly how players are are, are playing the mm -hmm. game, um, and uh, and then a bunch of updates around that from a gameplay perspective. It doesn't change the fundamentals of the game. Um, some of the updates are are, are pretty big, but uh, but the the way you play it and the reasons you play it uh, really get reinforced in this uh, in this battle mode update. So again, two big two big um, uh, really exciting um, upgrades to the game coming up uh, later this year. Yeah, a little with the battle mode stuff. It's it's kind of a streak based uh, ranking uh, ranking system that we have. 
with uh, what we hope to have streak-based uh, matchmaking. Nice. So uh, we'll also be addressing some of the lobby dodging right. that we know that goes on. So uh, you'll be incentivized to stick around to increase your rank, and um, and then you you have the potential uh, to to you know try to. We're going to try to steer you into matching with people that uh, are at or near your your streak currently. Uh, which should provide some good competitive matches moving forward. Um, really, I, I mean, I'm really excited about that stuff, and I think a lot of the battle mode community, you know, should be pretty pumped about sure. it. Uh, with Horde, you know, I, I think it's really going to be a bit of fan service there, and we can't wait, you know, to 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 get it in the fans' hands. I mean, I, I think there's a fair amount of... Like, it's got an arcade-ish flair to it. I mean, I definitely think people who loved arcade mode from Doom 2016 will see some of that arcade flavoring to the overall experience. Uh, but like any Horde mode, it's going to feel deep. Uh, I think some of the pillars, you have to feel like you're unlocking additional, uh, you know, combat sequences and maybe even uh, arenas or, or sections. Uh, by completing skill-based challenges that we have centered around this high-value target system that we have, where basically during the arena, certain characters will be highlighted and you'll be given a certain amount of time. Uh, it'll be tiered. Ooh. There's like the first tier, if you kill the high value, let's say a Marauder shows up and he's marked as the high-value target, he'll have an outline around him. Kind of, They look kind of like Empowered Demons and they have an icon above their head. And uh, if you kill them within first X seconds, TBD, that'll be varied, you know, based on the AI that we apply this to. And it could be any AI, really, uh, or, or a number of AI. If you kill them in the first X seconds, uh, that's gold tier, and you'll get a, a significant amount of points rewarded. Uh, then it goes down to silver, you know, to, to bronze, to then he just disappears. If you complete the high value target challenges, which again, it could be like five prowlers, you know, one marauder, five marauders, who knows? Um, <laughs> then you'll be able oh to uh, increase your score, obviously, <laughs> depending on how quickly you kill them. But then also um, unlock, that will contribute, if you, if you successfully complete enough of the in-game uh, skill-based challenges, you'll be able to unlock additional waves, you know, a few bonus rooms, which I think is core to the experience. I, I think that's what, what players want. Um, it will have an ending. It won't feel, in, it'll feel like it's super deep, like a good horde mode should. And when you get into the the third act of this thing at the very last waves that you've unlocked if you were able to I mean that's when you know we're, we're gonna be going all out for sure you will be rewarded for however many BFG shots you have at the end of your waves and at the end of the experience so you're kind of encouraged to conserve your BFG shots as all the best players do you watch our stream you know that we don't like to shoot BFG shots we like to kill everything ourselves that's right so you'll be rewarded for that uh, in in the uh, w when it comes to score in the horde mode and listen that's something that I think only the best players will really be focused on because that's that's when the leaderboard comes into play uh, the replay value really comes from competing with yourself for the best personal will we'll be ranking your score throughout keeping track of it and you'll be competing uh, to see if you could outdo your personal best score uh, unlocking 100% of the content, beating all the high value targets on gold standard, you know, getting the max score, you know, completing some of the, yes, there will be traversal puzzles in there as well, uh, without dying too many times. So it's really all about making the perfect run. Uh, and then once you've uh, moved past your personal best, and let's say you're, you're getting like the TBD on what we call it, but like a Slayer rank, mm -hmm. then you'll move on to the um, kind of the, the, the overall leaderboard, which we will have and we'll be tracking to see who is the very best Slayers uh, in, in, inside of the Doom, Doom Eternal fan base. So lots of reason to re keep replaying it. And a fair amount of, uh, of randomization. I wouldn't say infinite randomization. It's not going to be endless, but there is definitely randomization in there. So we want to make sure that each time you run through, you have a different experience and, and there's some opportunity there for some surprises. So lots of, lots of stuff in there that I think the fans are going to love. I think it meets the expectations of what people want to see out of a Doom Eternal Horde mode. On, uh, we can't wait to see uh, the, you know, the community streaming it and playing it, and and it should be awesome. And maybe maybe we'll stream it too, Josh. I don't know. See how far we'll we get. See. Yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll maybe give it a try once or twice. But speaking of that, the exciting <laughs> thing is, is I I, I see a ten-hour stream oh, coming. Oh no, on. Marty just doomed us. That's it. <laughs> it's ten hours. Lock it in. Make your coffee. But speaking of, I was going to say like, so we've got two master levels, one of which is DLC content, which means 
Hugo, you've talked about this a lot on stream with the level designers that we have at id and what they're able to push in. Huge. When you add in the DLC content, we're talking about Sentinel Hammer, which means we're talking about Armored Baron. Like, I, my mind is like reeling to think yes. about the encounters that are in World Spear now. But because you have the hammer, yes, and we all know that the hammer is pretty OP. Yes. <laughs> that rather than rebalance the hammer and you know maybe lower it a little bit, and maybe it takes one more glory kill. Let's let the combat meet the hammer in terms of 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 the balance. You know, that's how we'll achieve ba the balance within the DLC's master levels. We won't nerf the hammer. We'll bring the combat up to meet the hammer and really test uh, to see how good you are at using that thing and when to use it. It's pretty strategic. Ultimately, it just means that there's kind of no limit to how much stuff we could throw at you because you have that hammer. And uh, I played it myself. It's really, really intense. Um, but I think it still could be more intense, Josh. It's kind of at that point where it's like, <laughs> Yeah, this is pretty good. Right. It's like, have but we like, hit 11? I think we could Maybe. probably dial okay. up a... Yeah. Yes, have we hit, have we hit 11? Right. That so, sounds good. At, at or equal to... It, it has to go beyond Taris Nabar. Right. I mean, it does, because you don't have the, you don't have the hammer in Taris Nabar. True. So, uh, it, it, it's so much fun just bathing in the combat with that hammer. Right. I mean, there's just no... Again, you just... There's no limit to what you could do <laughs> because of how powerful that hammer is and how it works within the loop, so... <laughs> I, I think there's, that's going to make for some interesting vids. I look forward to see what our, all the Doom tubers out there, you know, do with this one. Yeah, you you can tell whether it's you know whether it's Hugo stream or like what we're, you know, what we do from a master level perspective or you know the plans for horde mode. Like how important it is to us that that uh, all, all of those players out there that are streaming and playing. Um, I, you know, I think you know they, they, they have become known as the Doom Tubers, which is which is amazing. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but this content that you know that we have coming up again, it's we, we really I think one of the great things about Doom Combat, the way that we're approaching, the way the team is approaching the Horde mode, is that that wide variation in in play capabilities. You know, you can play stuff on a low difficulty. You can get in there if you've played the combat, and like we said, you know the combat. You can be successful in horde mode or the master levels, but then you know if you are on that ultra high end and you've you've really invested the time into you know into a campaign game, mm -hmm. like some of these people, it's it's unheard of how much time they've invested into into the campaign. Yeah. It really means a lot to us, and and I think you know the payoffs with with some of this stuff we have coming up is is going to be great. And like like Hugo said, we really just look so forward to to watching the vids. It's it's amazing the the way people play the game these days. Absolutely. And speaking of which, so we've got the two master levels, one of which is DLC content, which is going to be nuts, going to be wild. We've got the battle mode streak based matchmake stuff, which is going to be just making all of the people that are in there every day as the best demons and the best slayers, just giving them like higher challenges, more carrots, which is amazing. But also, we, we didn't even mention yet. I know it doesn't have a, a level name, but there's a new battle mode arena that's coming that we've worked with our amazing uh, uh, spicy players on the design. We like actually had sessions with them, and I, I'm just going to spoil it here by saying they said it was the best level they'd ever played, and I'm not just saying that. They, those guys don't take that stuff lightly. So there's that also coming in this update. Which and listen, the best part is th they helped us design it. So yep. if you guys don't like it. <laughs> Send your feedback to them. That's, that's right. Go to the Spicy Demons Discord and let them know what right you think. And, and <laughs> that's right. Yeah. The uh, no, they they did, and and you know we hope to build on that relationship right. uh, as we move forward. It's just the company overall. We've got tremendous fans. We've even been able to bring some of the fans into id, id software, right. and, and we've hired a few of them. That's right. Uh, so it's been a really tremendous experience. And uh, we think this map is really, really awesome. We think the fans are going to love it. There's ongoing, uh, you know, balance considerations taking place right now uh, as we speak. You know, James Duggan, yourself, I know you guys are in there. You're getting the feedback from the fans. We did some damage fall off stuff. We yeah. did lots of things to battle mode. Um, so we're, we're, we're fine tuning that balance. We think we've improved, as Marty said, the overall performance of the mode. I think. We're not going to do the month of the day because that's always madness because development isn't the, the easiest thing to mark on a calendar and say, yep, we're going to ship it that day, no problem. But I think we can give a general time frame. So when can people expect update 6.66? 6 
Yeah, month and day, <laughs> you say not the easiest. I think it's the hardest thing in video game development yeah. to, 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 to pinpoint a day. But uh, uh, we're, we're really looking to get all this stuff out this fall. There's more coming, because <laughs> I feel like getting to just the Switch stuff, right? Because, okay, by the way, we just did DLC 1 and 2 this last year. I don't even know how the hell you guys pulled that off. Again, somehow you guys did bigger scale, bigger challenge, added weapons, added monsters and demons without even being in the same office. So first of all, kudos to you guys on that and for continuing to make <laughs> amazing content for it. But also on Switch, our buddies at Panic Button that we've worked closely with, they've already put out the base game, they've already put out uh, Ancient Gods Part 1. But Ancient Gods Part 2, we have a special treat for everybody right now. And we are going to roll a trailer uh, that might give some more information and maybe a little bit of some gameplay that you can see now. Well, there you have it. That is just another, it's just like you thought we were done this year, but we still had Ancient Gods Part 2 to deliver to Switch users, right? So we had to get that done. Um, so that's coming soon and that's going to yeah. be amazing. And, and again, you, you said, uh, you, you know, you mentioned Panic Button, mm -hmm. but uh, really just a great, great partnership. I've said it many times. They're, they're, uh, they're a really, really, really talented team and it's been, it's been just fantastic to collaborate with them. On, uh, on the Switch versions. Uh, if you look at Doom Eternal, and, and it's also great credit to, to, you know, to our engine team, Billy, Tiago, um, Robert, and that, and that team, uh, just, just how scalable that is. When you look at you know, the, the ultra high end that we just released on next gen, and then you, you take that all the way down to a handheld platform in the Switch, it is, it is incredible. And, and uh, you know, uh, Panic Button's just done, done a great job. Um, working with the technology, working with uh, the game to deliver. I mean, you see it in the trailer there. Like it's it, it, it is not a watered down version of Doom Eternal. No. Um, it's definitely a different resolution and a different frame rate. But if you if you want to play that and you want to play it on the go, it's it's there and it's exactly what what you'd expect from a Doom game. And I mean, another shout out exactly to that point. It's super cool to announce that as of right now, when you're watching this. The Slayers collection for Doom is now available on Switch. And so this is something cool. So we released this maybe about a year, year and a half ago on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. But of course, because we're bringing it to the Switch and Nintendo is where Doom 64 is from, the Slayers collection on Nintendo Switch, available now digitally in the eShop, also comes with Doom 64, which is just a nice touch. It's just a nice nod. So again, you could basically <clears throat> buy that and Eternal and then DLC 1 and 2, and you would have the entire catalog of every Doom you game have ever made on, on in your pocket, handheld. It's insane. And of course, that comes with Doom 2016. Um, but you guys, we are at that time, gentlemen, where we have to say our goodbyes. Um, so 
Thank you, both of you guys, for being here today. This has been incredible. Uh, it's been an honor to share the virtual stage with both of you. But as I say goodbye, uh, and I pass it to Marty, we've also got a little treat of a community video we put together in-house as a little bit of a tribute. Isn't that right, Marty? Yeah, yeah absolutely. We know, uh, first of all, I want to say thanks to you. you you've done a great job, uh, and it's a lot of work. Uh, but uh, you know everything you've done with Hugo on the stream and and all of this is just uh, just fantastic fantastic job and and uh, you know you you work with this group that we're going to highlight uh, a lot. Um, these are just a few just a few of the uh, you know Doom tubers out there the the contributors of content um, and and we know how hard it is we know how much work goes into it um, so we wanted to say thanks by by highlighting a, a, a few clips um, and just just share share our appreciation. Um, and, and also thank you to everybody who's tuning in. Thank you to, to the QuakeCon audience. Uh, really appreciate it and can't wait to see everybody next year. Very well said, Marty. Thank you for that. And also, Hugo, as a final goodbye, do you have any, any, any final words for this amazing QuakeCon community that we've got in this, this Doom video? Yeah, I thought everything that Marty said was perfect. Doom would not be the same without you guys. Thank you so much for the support. We've got some more content coming, so stick with us. Uh, thank you again for the feedback, for all the hilarious videos, for the banter, uh, and, and we love it. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. Thank you again for everything. Later. See ya. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, I'm back. Oh, my God. Dude, back Let's off go. if you can. Let's go, baby. Oh, my God. Get blocked. Get blocked. Get blocked. <laughs> Yo, hold on one second. Be alone, Dread Knight. I'm trying to watch the kaiju battle. Go for the rocket kick. Yeah! This is the greatest day of my life. I take it back. Torch his face off! Oh, what is this? A catapult? Do I get to fire it this time? Oh, wait, don't tell me. Yes! Yeah! Yes! Clutch saving throw! I love you! Oh! <laughs> yes! Is a tough one. Okay. What? Oh, what? Oh. What? Dude, dude. What? Oh my, oh my no. god. <laughs> <laughs> you did not just do that. I did. Yes! Woo! Ah! <laughs> so we're we're playing Doom Eternal. I wanna play that when I grow up. Love this kid. <laughs> well, do me a favor, cause we gotta get back into the swing of it. Tell the internet, rip and tear. Rip and, and tear until it is done.